ladies and gentlemen good evening happy dasera to all of you and uh, today's is the 15th session in our webinar series a uh, slightly different session from the rest of the 14 uh, but a very interesting session because aquariums also are a part of gardening because there is no aquarium without a without green in it so green is an integral part of aquarium and aquatic uh, ecosystem so uh, we have a very interesting uh, guest today dr choudhury's son ashad choudhury uh, he is a young wildlife enthusiast a very active member of the snake society of hyderabad rescued more than 300 poisonous and non poisonous snakes also a very good nature nature conservationist but otherwise after his ms from us he has been working as a creative strategist in a digital uh, communications company so welcome to this session ashad are we looking forward to learn a, a lot so about much. aquarium and aquatic plants all right thank you thank you so much uh so let me start with a good evening a very happy good evening to all of you guys and happy dashera how was your day today good. anyone 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 so this is not going great, to be great. an educative session this is going to be an experience sharing session i will just share my great experience with you so it's it's not going to be like a uh, a one way ticket kind of a conversation because i want you guys to answer me you guys can ask me a question anytime you guys want because i'm not going to wait for you to wait till the end and then ask me questions cuz i will forget you will also forget so i just thought of a few things that i could that i wanted to share with you guys so may i start the session guys i mean are you interested in aquariums can anyone talk please yes i know yes yes good evening sir so you are here let me share my screen with you okay So we are basically going to talk about the basics of aquariums and aquatic ecosystems today. So, any of you guys had aquariums before? Yes. Yes. So, do you still have yes. an aquarium? Never so far, oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you still have an aquarium? Well, yeah. That's a good deal. So, I have been having aquariums for about twenty years now. So, I have about four aquariums. I have more than five to six ponds. So, this was like an inherited. quality from my uncle and from my dad so since then i have not lost that interest because this hobby is that exciting it's very very exciting because once you get into it you will not you will not be able to get out of it but what i'm going to talk about here today is about plants in an ecosystem that you create artificially right so let me just move forward can you you can just say you can just go unmute yourself and say i have a doubt and you can just ask me a question right guys cool so i'm going to the next slide what is an aquarium what do you guys think that an aquarium is can someone just give me one answer what do you think is an aquarium anyone okay well so basically an aquarium is a setup that you are making artificially if you see the tank right behind me that's an artificially made setup so here what i do is you need to have a few things in mind so first thing an aquarium fish live at a at a natural ecosystem right so here what we have is we don't have a natural ecosystem but we are giving them the, the most natural ecosystem that we can give them artificially so many people you might have seen a lot of friends you might have had gifts and stuff like that in like small bowls in in like small like four goldfish and people all of you know goldfish right i've never had a goldfish in my life because goldfish is are just not they're very hard to take care of so here what goes around is that you guys have small aquariums small ponds small little tanks in which fish never survive fish need their ecosystem for example i've been living in a three bedroom house now with a garden you put me at a flat i might suffocate it might take time for me to settle down but that's not my natural ecosystem because i have been living in an open area with a lot of plants a lot of fish a lot of dogs and etc so here you go so that's an aquarium an aquarium is basically an artificial biotope biotope is giving them their 
the closest natural ecosystem possible, right? Now I'll tell you, there are two types of aquariums. One is the freshwater aquariums. Second one is the marine water aquarium or the salt water aquarium. So the freshwater aquariums are the, are the are aquariums that are made out of freshwater fish and freshwater, meaning you have rivers, you have different ponds, you have lakes, etc. But marine water and salt water is ocean. So here you also have another type, which I'll be talking a little later. It's called the brackish water, which lives in a very difficult environment, which is a mix of the fresh water and the marine water. So that's the brackish water setup, which normally happens in, so you, you might be knowing something called the backwaters, right? Anyone here, please? Yeah. I want this to be a two-way conversation, right? Yes, yes. Yes. So a brackish water setup is one kind of a setup. So I'm going to talk about a few setups today. So the one on the left that you see is a freshwater setup. That's a freshwater planted aquarium setup. And the one that you see on the right hand side is a marine setup. So basically, first of all, for the freshwater aquariums, you're, you're trying to create the closest ecosystem for them using all the tropical plants, the substrate, the rocks we have and the fish that we get. But in marine setup, it's way difficult because you need salt water there and a lot of flow of salt water for these marine fish, marine life to survive, right? So I'm not going to dive into marine water today because that's very, very difficult for us to talk about. So I'm only going to talk about the most interesting part of uh, aquariums is the freshwater aquariums. So like I said, as you can see in between, there is a brackish water setup. Oh, sure. Okay. And on the right hand side, there is a hardscape setup. And on the left hand side, there's a planted setup. So the, I mean, it is pretty, it is pretty self-explanatory planted setup with a lot of plants. Brackish setup is, is, this is an advanced way of fish keeping. I have not gotten into brackish yet, but I could have. So brackish water is a mix of marine water, salt water and fresh water. And you need a lot of dry leaves and a, a dark environment for these specific fish to stay. Hardscapes are the ones the ones that eat plants that are omnivorous fish. So for omnivorous fish that eat plants and fish cannot live in a planted setup because the moment when they get into a planted setup, they might eat each and every plant. So they, for them, you have a hardscape setup. Guys understood? Please ask me a doubt. Please just, please just be open. Okay. Now, how do we do? This is just an example that I made or how you can do a planted setup, right? First, you get a glass or an acrylic tank. You go to, uh, you, we, we all have like a lot of uh, uh, fish aquarium shops everywhere here and there. So you can get a tank first and then you get different kinds of substrate. The substrate, is, substrate depends on the variety you want. For example, river substrate. River substrate is nothing but gravel, pebbles or sand, you can call it. It can be of any kind. It can be full of black soil, mud soil too. So for example, if you take a river setup, for a river planted setup, for river fish, the fish that live in the river, they want a gravel setup because the water is always flowing. So all the thin mud washes off, silting happens. So there is gravel. So those are the fish that live in gravel. They go hide under the gravel. And you have another setup, uh, another kind of substrate called the mud substrate, like the Brahmaputra river, where the mud the whole river is muddy. It's red in color. So that's the mud setup. The other one is the black soil setup. No, you, we don't have a lot of black soil setups here. Like recently I went to this beautiful place in Karnataka called Agumbe. We, where we witnessed the Western Ghats, the, the, the most beautiful forests in India. It's like the Amazon of India. We saw a lot of fresh water river setups there with the fish that I used to buy here for a lot of cost. I saw them in the wild there. So that means the ecosystem was so good, so fresh, and we didn't have a lot of human conflict there. Not a lot of fishing, not a lot of garbage, not a lot of uh, people getting into that pond or getting into that lake. So it is very crystal clear and very pristine, I must say. So that's talking about the substrate. So for another planted setup, what you want, you want the plants to grow. So you guys might be knowing with a lot of uh, sessions already on plants that you know what photosynthesis is, right? 
so they take in uh, oxygen in the night in the morning they they release oxygen in the night so it's a cycle that happens for that cycle as you you use a lot of fertilizers and manures in for for plants here we also use something called the fertilizer for the aquarium fertilizer for our aquarium plants to grow now you can use you can use natural fertilizers like manure like a bit of you know like cow dung you filter it in in a, in a small tube mix it with a lot of water slowly induce it into the soil for the plants to grow and the most biggest part of the aquarium setup is the light so because the water plants depend on light because they live in water so their photosynthesis happens really really well when they have a lot of light when they don't have a lot of light slowly rot starts happening that is because the photosynthesis cycle is not happening properly so that is one thing second thing i'm not able to yeah i can close this yes third thing is a filter as we have as we take rivers and lakes in different points there is some kind of a water inflow and there is some kind of a water outflow and in nature what happens is every in a year in every 6 months the fish it's like an ecosystem taking place like an eco ecological cycle that keeps taking part okay okay anyway yeah yeah it's fine so an ecological cycle takes place so in that cycle what happens is the fish die and they give they give the fry the babies or they 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 release their eggs they die the pond gets spoiled but again when it rains the pond starts growing again so it's a fresh pond again so this happens naturally but in our aquariums and tanks that does not happen naturally so we use the filter we want to take inflow of dirty water we we use a sponge inside that filter which takes in and we use a bio charcoal which holds a lot of dirt and all the bio uh, wastage and releases fresh water so for that uh, with that these fish do not go through a hassle you are giving them a nice fresh pristine environment all the time i have i have had situations while i was growing up i still had recently with this tank 2 months ago i had beautiful fish i had like like 10 pairs of uh, five pairs of big marble angel fish they also laid eggs but one night i couldn't change water by the time i came back the next day all the fish died so diseases come out if you don't filter water a lot of things happen now what does what what is the part of aquatic plants in these setups so i i think i mean it would be good if it's a two way but i'll go on so i'll talk about types of aquatic plants that we have we have few submerged plants few growing i'll talk in detail once we move forward but yeah so this is how you make a good planted setup right now i'm going to talk about different types of fresh water setups as you can see in the right corner this is a rock setup as you see above this is a river setup where there are plants that are growing above water level as you can see on the left this is a mot this is a proper moss yugiyami setup this is a japanese setup that people do with a lot of plants called monte carlo it's a very very rare this thing this is one of the best setups in the world i just wanted to show you of how beautiful uh, these setups can be made and have a look at it how natural they are there there's not not a lot of fish in them there's just a small school of fish it's more like a garden that they want to grow a uh, underwater garden than showing their fish because if you put in a lot of fish and you don't have any character in your tank or any plants in your tank your fish will not live for a very long time you got to give them a natural environment yes so i'm not now going to talk about different kinds of fish now this is an interesting part many guys might not know that there are a few fish that for example i'll take the live bearers these are the most important fish that you would want to deal with so we have the live bearer fish we have the cichlid fish we have the labyrinth fish we have the bimodal breathing fish which i'll show you live because i have one in my house it's a beautiful specimen that i have that i can show it to you and you have different carnivorous fish and you have a schooling barb fish schooling meaning you will have they are happy only when they are in a school of fish when they are around 25 to 30 together they are they're very active and they can take over any prey but when they are singular or they are like a couple they really go into a hiding space because they like to be in groups right so here you go i'm mainly going to talk a lot about the live bearer fish 
because these are the fish you would want to have if you have a pond set up at home because these are mosquito eating fish these are mosquito controlling fish now in my house i have a i have a huge garden i have a lot of uh, lot of ponds everywhere because we love lotus as a family so we get different kinds of lilies from different ponds etc so in every pond there's a lot of mosquitoes that breed so to maintain the whole ecosystem what we do is we put these live bearer fish because these give live birth it it's right in the name they give live birth so you have a four four or five different kinds of fish that are very very common and very uh, economical to buy for example a pair of these fish are 20 bucks 30 rupees 40 rupees you know like the molly the guppy the platy so guppies also have different varieties platies have different varieties the sword tail has different varieties but they all come under one segment called the live bearer fish they are also called mosquito eating fish and these reproduce every 3 weeks and they reproduce in a large manner so they have a lot of fry i'm talking about 100 babies at once which is very very interesting so live bearer fish is what you want to get if you have a pond at home right next is the labyrinth fish do anyone know what a labyrinth fish is i have had a few labyrinth fish you guys might be knowing this very famous fish that moves around many fish aquariums i've seen in many houses with a small little bowl with one beautiful looking fish with beautiful they are sometimes in red sometimes in blue sometimes in yellow they are called the betta fish the fighter fish people i don't know if you have you you might have seen it. it's a pretty common fish so these fish they do not need a lot of oxygen because they are labyrinth fish labyrinth fish meaning if the fish is in an aquarium or a pond for a long time if it's not getting enough oxygen in the water it comes up takes in water takes in air goes back in water so that's why for these you don't need a filter and these these kind of labyrinth fish are mainly found in farms in different in thailand like in japan what they do is they do without having a friction between human and fish they use fish to control their farm to gain manure to grow their farm like rice like the fields you know like rice or different legumes and stuff so in that water in small small potholes these fish live because they don't need a lot of oxygen they take in air they come up and take in air that's why it is the most ridiculously cruelly sold fish in the world and they they don't live they don't live with another male so what they do is they live in small places so it's always known to have a small little aquarium the aquarium shop will probably tell you you can have a small little bowl and you can have one of this fish but the problem is you that is not the problem with this fish you cannot have it in one bowl you can have it in a natural ecosystem that it needs so i'm coming back i have been repeating ecosystem natural ecosystem once and for all because it is quite important for you to have anything even to have aquatic plants so aquatic plants and aquatic fish go together go hand in hand if you have fish the the plants have manure if there's a lot of manure there's a lot of plants and you don't have fish you have a lot of mosquito larvae you have a lot of mosquitoes breeding and there is the cichlid fish the cichlid is a very a uh, raw and an aggressive variety of fish in here with cichlid fish what comes is the most important thing is the size here the size matters for example if the same variety of a blue morph i'm just giving you an example a blue morph fish the same variety of it if one fish is big the other one is small the big one will kill the smaller one so it's all survival of the fittest and these are omnivorous fish so they eat plants they eat bugs they eat other smaller fish they eat of their own kind there are situations when a big cichlid fish ate a frog ate a snake there are a lot of instances like this so now these fish need a rocky setup they don't need plants unless you have very very hardy plants like lotus or lily but that is which is very difficult to grow in an aquarium i still have a lily growing very difficult to take care they they can break open every and they are diggers they they like to dig they like to go underground dig and come up so they'll spoil your ecosystem so for them you all you need is a hardscape setup a few rocks a few stones here and there and they love it they need a lot of hiding spots the bimodal breeder fish now these are the variety of fish that are pretty common in india and pretty famous around the world 
there are four five different names to this fish this this species one is the snake head second is the marel which you which you find on the road for example people kill people sell a lot of fish you might see live fish edible fish for sale on the road they just like that and they are alive why are they alive they are alive because these fish do do not need extra water they only need air so what they do is every 2 minutes if they are in water they go down they have to come up to take in air and go in if they stay inside water for long they drown and die so these are very different creatures of fish that are endemic to india and these fish are now the, the one that you see here on the left is called the scientific name is channa blheri this is from assam this beautiful fish is from assam but these fish are exported from here to germany to scotland because people love this fish and they are highly carnivorous fish you put another one of the same variety they will fight each other and kill and they eat they eat only live fish they don't eat any fish food that you give or dead food they don't even eat a dead fish they want a live fish live frog they they pretty carnivorous i have one of this the breeder if you can see it's a very big specimen i'll show it to you the next is the schooling barb the schooling barb fish is basically like i said before these are nippers they don't like other fish when they're in groups they become aggressive when they're to when they're not too many together they 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 don't really they get scared and they go into a hiding position let me shift to the carnivorous large species in the carnivorous large species the one you see in the end is an alligator gar it is the second biggest growing fish in the world which is again exported illegally in fish trade commonly so like i am a big fan of alligator gar i don't buy the species at all because what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this fish put it in the tank but this fish will grow up to 2 and 1/2 3 feet in 3 months so i don't have anything to do so when this fish grows that fast i'll have to get a bigger tank i'll have to get a bigger tank so it grows to up to 12 to 13 feet when i cannot take care of a fish i will go release it in a nearby lake or a pond so when i release that fish in a nearby lake or a pond they become invasive and they eat all the other native fish that are there in the pond so you always be always remember not to take a very big fish if you cannot handle it anyway going next now i'm going to talk about oh sorry i made a mistake here but anyway i'm going to talk about plants i'm going to talk about different plants different plant varieties i luckily i have all the plant varieties with me but i only i can only show you a few so there are deep submersible plants the one on the right that you see the one huge wavy leaves it has it's called the vallisneria they are hardy native indian plants native indian plants that are deep rooted that are deep rooted and long the next one is the pistia species the pistia species on the second right that you see are floaters they float they don't the roots are so heavy that they don't so heavy and their and their their tulips are so light that they just float they don't go in and they take all the nutrients from all the manuric water so whenever you see these pistia these these floaters around different ponds then you should get to know that that pond is a little dirty and has a lot of manure so that's why that plant is living and the other ones you know you know that you have lilies and lotus lilies and lotus are deep tuber plants now we are getting rhizome plants too like yesterday i went to a friend's uh lotus farm he's got 130 varieties of lotus with him few lotus have a tuber like a like a like a bulb underneath which has roots and the mother plant grows few of them grow from a stem and a root too <coughs> excuse me yeah so these are lilies that you know on the left corner the red plant that you see they are called crypts cryptocorine and now these cryptocorine i can show them to you here if you can see i don't know if you can see just just give me a second yeah sorry yeah as you can see this is a crypt this is a crypt this is a kabumba this is a valsneria that i'm growing by the way i have a lot of piranhas in here wild caught all of them 
I have five pairs of piranhas in here. So this is a lily that you can see. You know, these are crypts. These are very nice plants that don't need a lot of fertilizers or nothing. They just need to be in soil or gravel. And every plant, like I said, needs light. So we don't we don't give them natural lighting. We don't have natural lighting in aquariums. So we give them an artificial lighting, as per the size of the aquarium and as per the uh, type of the plant. So the plants I have got is all native plants because I cannot really keep tropical plants. Tropical plants are various kinds. We have different kinds of ferns. We have different kinds of uh, cryptos. We have different kinds of echinodorus. The one you see here underneath, the one which a real mosaic print. It's called the mosaic plant. These are also feeders. These are also floaters. Sorry. So these beautifully they float. They don't need. <coughs> they take all the nutrients from water. Let me show you. Now this. This is called a frog bed. This is African, as you can see, and this has roots. So when you take this, put it in this. It will just float. It won't. You don't have to pot it. But I got valves here. Now these are valves. These have rhizomes. These have roots that I have to pot. But these are also native to India, so they don't demand a lot of fertilizers and stuff. Now the interesting part here is I'll have to tell you about this plant, which is the kabomba. I got in lots. These are stem plants. They they can grow root from any side, from this side, this side, from here, anywhere. So they don't need water. You can tie them and put them underneath, like submerge them in like soil, or you can leave leave them just like that in water. What they do is the best part about these plants are they are water purifiers. They purify water. So I have another plant that I could show you. This is a very rare plant that I got. It's called kabomba red. This becomes deep red in color. It's really, really beautiful, and they multiply like crazy. I can propagate them. Like I've just left them in my ponds, and they've propagated everywhere. So yes, any questions, guys? And again, fish ponds are different environments. So this is just a basic little understanding experience that I shared with you. That's about it. If you guys like this, like I can actually have another session in detail scientifically. So if you have any questions, please ask me. Hi Arshad, I'm Kavita. Hello, uh, Kavita. First of all, this is amazing session. Um, mm. Beautiful. Even though I don't have an aquarium, I'm really keen on um, you yes. know, gardening and plants. So, uh, uh, very interesting session. So, I yes. have a question for you. Please. I wanted to know about the, um, uh, you know, aquariums tend to get dirty, right? Like the glass, the inside walls tend to get yes. dirty because of the plants and the, uh, you know, the yes. the moss and all of that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. aquatic. Uh, uh, I know you did talk about aquatic plants, which are natural cleaners. But are there any aquatic fish that also serve as natural cleaners? Like they eat up the yes. moss, or they just keep yes, the glass yes, clean? Yes, How we've yes. seen in Finding Nemo? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We do have a lot of, lot of fish that are there that basically live on scat. Basically, live. They are uh, scavengers. They eat. They eat all the moss that they, they, we call them cleaners, but we have something called the sucker cat fish. We don't like that fish a lot because that has a bad reputation. It nicely cleans the glass, but the problem is it, it again shits a lot too. So that's also waste. So that fish is not recommendable, but there are n number of different species that control algae growth, you know, like they clean dirt, they keep the aquarium clean. Now in this tank, I'm not going to move. I'm just going to, Put some food. You might see a few piranhas just coming to eat there. They're very skittish. Give me a second. Oh, so Ashad, you might want to stop sharing the slide deck so that we can see what you're showing us. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is a very minuscule, tiny window on the side. Oh, yes, yes. I'm very sorry. I totally forgot about that. Do I go here? You can tap on the screen. Tap on the screen. You can see, still see a full screen. Tap on the screen. Uh, not you. Uh, whoever wants to see full screen can just tap on the screen. You will still be able to see it full screen. 
I have to stop sharing screen. Ha, stop sharing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You guys clear? Hello? Oh, yeah. This is, yeah, yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Much better. So as you yeah, can yeah. see, as you can see, I mean, it's not very clear in this camera, but I have these plants that are growing. These plants that are growing. My piranhas are hiding here. So they like to be in a group. As I'm sitting here, they don't really want to come. But if you give it some time, they'll actually come and readily eat all the food that I give them. You know? Because I'm talking here, there's a lot of movement here. They're not really reacting. Otherwise, they're, they're all wild caught. Like, I can't even put my finger in it. You know, they take a bite, the chunk out of your hand. Really, really bite. So hopefully, hopefully. You see the red lily inside, guys? You see the red lily inside? Is it possible to go a little closer, Asha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem with that. Huh? Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, can you yeah, see the red? Yes, yes, that's much better. Thank you. So these are the Valsen area that I was showing, the nice submersible native plant. And these are your cleaners. These clean your water. These are the stem plants, the kabomba. Very good. Yes, and this is a lily. Lily needs a lot of light. They need 100% light. So that's why they're not doing that great. Otherwise, they really flourish. They really grow, grow really, really fast. So I'll also show you something else. Let me show you. I'll show my fellow. So this, my fellow is from the Brahmaputra River. <laughs> her name is Mila. Can you see her? Yes. <laughs> Guys, so nice. she's a, yeah, she's a snakehead. She's called Chana Orantimaculata. She eats only fish and or she's Lourdes. a breather. She's a breather. If you see, give me a second, give me a second. Yeah, if you see, my hand movement, she's ready to eat food. Like, if you see like that, yes, now I can show you. See? If you have a look, you can just come off a food. Look at that. See that? Now that's a breather. So I want to tell you about this fish very importantly because this fish has to breathe, take in air and go in. If it stays in water for a longer time, it'll, it'll die, it'll drown basically. So what she does is she keeps coming up, taking air, she'll go back in. Now she wants food. Like she'll readily wait for food. I'm just putting my finger here. She'll jump too, you know? So that's one. So these are, this is not an aquarium. Like you were talking about, those, the, they, spoil the, they spoil the floor, the back, all that, has, all that is algae growth. I've not maintained this system much, but I have another beautiful specimen here. That's a crayfish. You see that? Freshwater. It's a freshwater crayfish. So that was the size of half a finger of that. Now he eats, he's eating a cucumber and he's a nice cleaner. He eats all the dirt that fishes make. You guys are able to see it, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is a smaller variety of a lobster. He's been with us for about a year now. He's grown really, really big. So that's about it. So please ask me any more questions that you have. Yeah, I did, no? Did everything, yes, yes. So like I said, there is... Always remember one we have the floaters that just float, right? One are the one are the breathers. No, one are the uh, freshwater cleaners, stem plants. So these will clean your stem, uh, clean your tank. Basically, they pr- purify water. The other plants also purify, but these purify pretty pretty well. And the other ones are submergible deep plants. Now, what I don't have is in that that uh, the tank that I just showed you, the big fish tank. I have. Ferns in it. Ferns, they don't really grow in mud or soil. They grow on a stone or a wood or a piece of wood. So what ferns do is, you can see the piranhas now. Look at the meat. Guys, can you see that? Wow. Yeah? They're readily, they're all wild caught piranhas from the Amazon basin. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Asha. You are the host now. You can share your screen if you want. 
I am sharing my screen already, but yeah. So yeah, tell me any other questions, guys? Very interesting, Kasha. Very interesting. All about the fish and the plants. Fish again, Kasha. This is Kavita again. Yes. So, what are some of the some of the no nos? Like, what are some of the things you should definitely not do when it comes to uh, fish keeping? Fish keeping. Uh, yeah. Paying and you know the some of the best practices, etc. Yes. 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 I totally missed that point in the presentation. That's a very nice question. You cannot use. You cannot हेलो सो यस सो यू के नॉट यूज मेडिकली ट्रीटेड वॉटर फॉर दीज दैट्स वन मेन बिकॉज वी हैव अ लॉर्ड ऑफ a uh, community water that comes in in many apartments many houses now for example we have a ground bore well so we get ground water ground water is very good for these species for for fish in general but ground water gives a lot of salt stains on the glass which are very difficult to take out but that doesn't matter all you should care about is if you keep it keep cleaning once a week it should be good but always remember treated medically treated water that comes from the community tanks you can never put fish in it they will die instantly municipal water so what you do is the only hack you have is when you need when you don't have uh, bore water and you want uh, when you only have medically treated water you want it to become uh, good for the fish right you get how many of buckets you want of water keep it under the sun for 5 days so all the chemical dies post that you can use that water so that's one main thing second thing don't get any plant or any fish that you don't know about because you want you don't want to keep it you don't want to keep it third thing third thing don't be in a hurry this aquatic plants is a whole different ball of game it will pull you in it it's a very it's a gambling game it will pull you in and you will want to keep getting stuff keep putting stuff keep getting new plants like i spend at least 3 4000 rupees for nothing every month only on fish i keep getting fish i keep getting plants i keep getting food so it's a hobby so it's a part of your life third thing is you cannot you cannot overfeed your fish they die of overfeeding you cannot they they like the less you feed they still survive but once you overfeed the fish they die so many people have kids and stuff so what they do as you don't know about your fish you get them to an aquarium put a lot of food the moment you put a lot of food slowly the water gets dirty and all the fish die so these are a few tips that i might give you another tip i might say that this needs time and patience like for example you get an aquarium now to get a tank now and you are a gardener so you like a lot of plants for plants to survive too you need manure and for and you you don't need mosquito larvae in your aquariums right so you you'd want these specific fish that you like live bearers for example now when you get them when you set up your tank when you put sand when you put the substrate substrate is basically substrate can be anything it can be sand it can be pebbles it can be gravel it can be anything when you put that you cannot fill in with water and put off fish the first day i do that i do that because i'm a little lazy second thing i have ponds outside so basically your fresh water tanks need something called cycling the water has to cycle so it takes about 3 to 4 days for the water to cycle so before the cycling takes place you should not put your fish in after you set up your first tank what i do is i go to my pond i take off two buckets of water cycle this basically bacteria growth in your water when there is bacteria in your water your fish are happier when there is no bacteria in your water your fish are not happy and your plants are not going to live so keeping bacteria in water is the most important so for that you need a 7 day cycle period of the water being stagnant in your tank with the filter on that's about it can i ask something hmm? yeah yeah please thank please. you very okay. very interesting okay. very interesting uh, program this is krishna prasad from this end and yes, uh, my memory is uh, gone back i think you remember me <laughs> yes yes i do sir yes, i do uh, all all the memories came in a gush uh, yeah yeah, yeah. We, we used to be in bangalore my younger brothers 
all they used to have an aquarium and i am just uh, actually seeing that as in a video through you <laughs> a great learning i think uh, beautiful uh, feel like owning you uh, know uh, one more video uh, one more aquarium thank you very much all the best you welcome uh -huh. sir asha de asha no sorry 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 go ahead yeah हेलो हेलो कैन यू हियर मी या या हेलो वी कैन हियर यू आ या बिकॉज़ समबडी हैज टू से हेलो नो ओके सी आई वांट टू ऐड टू थ्री थिंग्स फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज लाइट हाउ मच लाइट यू रिक्वायर फॉर योर एक्वेटिक प्लांट्स देयर इज अ मेजर around 5000 uh what do you call it the measure for light for what the word 5000 units watts not watts units. i will tell you what you talking about the led this thing ah uh, lumens lumens not lumens sorry i will just give you it went off around 5000 units of that brightness light so it comes to at least four tube lights of 40 watts you require for at least 2 by 4 aquarium to grow your plants many times people have a trouble why my plant is not growing that one is because of lack of light secondly if you are not for too much of fish you want to grow only plants plants need light carbon dioxide and minerals to make their food with photosynthesis so what happens as because we are not changing water every day it is not a river flowing water gradually the nitrogen builds up and your carbon dioxide is reduced so they won't be able to perform photosynthesis well so what the professional plant growers they have a carbon dioxide cylinder they enrich the water with carbon dioxide so if you really want a very green aquarium you have less fish that to the plant, the fish which do not disturb the plants and then you have a commercially available carbon dioxide cylinder for a couple of hours you you need to release carbon dioxide in water so that plants grow very very lush green so light and co2 secondly lot of people ask me a uh, couple of times how to manure your uh, these aquatic plants you know we think the fish excreta the whatever the material excrete is enough to give some amount of manuring for this aquatic plants now the problem is many times we do not know whether you have a lush growth of these aquatic plants or surface with this available excreta of the fish we do not know so sometimes if you have if you are really growing aquatic plants you need to manure from outside i'll give a simple tip you cannot npk in aquatic plants all fish will die so nitrogen uh, phosphorus potassium you cannot give plants you have to give in some other means the tip is you buy a bone meal in your uh, garden shop you get a bone meal you take a bone meal nowadays you are disposing your mask no you put a make a small knot and make a small sack of bone meal drop put it close to the roots of your plants so this is actually how the lot of uh, lotus grower manure their uh, lotus lilies and aquatic plants even aquatic plant growers commercially they all have to give manure or uh, nutrients but you have to save the fish so do not use chemical manure so use bone meal around 5 to 10 grams in a small sack of a cloth not it should dissolve it should release slowly nutrients this is a how to provide nutrients to your aquatic plants thirdly quality of water because water gets uh, bad because it is stored there's no movement in the water ideally every week you take at least 3 4 inches of water top water take it off and add fresh water that will also maintains good nitrogen and other uh, minerals in the water so that fish and the plants remain very healthy now over to asha asha this is kavita uh, any other doubts guys hi asha can you hear me i'm kavita again can you hear me yes 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 i can 
yeah so i had another question like when we buy fish from um, you know the shops yeah and then you want to bring it and put it in your aquarium yeah should there be some kind of acclimatization that you bring Very it good. home that's a great fish? question it feels like you already have you already have a history of keeping fish because the questions you've been asking me there's with a lot of uh, yeah this is a very 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 good question that i didn't talk about so yes they do need their ph acclimatization time so whenever you buy a fish and come to your get it to your tank so what happens here is that you either have the ph value that is changing and the temperature of water that is always changing right so what you do is you get that bag you either have something called the hospital tank that we indians don't do much people in other countries use a lot of hospital tanks they have like a separate tank only to get their fish because the fish might have bugs too they have a lot of parasites and they die easily and then can kill the whole the whole tank very easily like one bad fish can kill all the fish that's what i think happened two months ago so what you do is if you have a hospital tank this is a longer way to do it you drop your fish you first you put whatever cover the the bag you got in drop it in that water let it acclimatize for 15 to 20 minutes and then slowly that water or sometimes i don't put that water i acclimatize the fish for about 20 minutes and then take the fish out of the net and drop it in my tank but the other way is just this like you you get your fish you put it in the aquarium for about 20 minutes take that out take your net you take all the water out pour all the water out take the fish and slowly drop it in a very nice question you have to acclimatize your fish otherwise they're going to die fast they 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 just die fast out of shock they very very delicate like there are fish that live that need only warm water there are fish now as you you've seen my fish that's a hardy fish but it's from a cold water area it's from brahmaputra so it needs cold water but well, luckily i have a nice filter that gives keeps giving it water it's a very hardy fish so i don't really have to worry and by the way that's an edible fish that people eat in uh, brahmaputra in assam like i just got it from there Which from a dealer from is, house what's the name of the fish the big fish that you have seen it's called a snake head it's called a, it's almost one foot it's a chana orontomaculata that's the it's called a golden cobra snake head so it's from okay yeah so it's from brahmaputra people eat that fish a lot we get a different variety of that here in hyderabad and bangalore and cities like that which is nothing but another snake head that you might see on the road you might see a lot of these these fish like just flapping around you know like at the fish market that are alive that don't need a lot of water these are those fish these are very very hardy fish they don't really die they live for like 6 hours 7 hours out of water but they can live 6 hours deep in water they might die so every two minutes they have to come up take in air going yes ma'am next question so if this is a asha that this is a edible fish what about the other normal uh, edible fish that we get in the fish market the rouse and you can keep uh, those too. all those also can be uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can can be put into the aquarium they're just not beautiful and they're not they're ah. not so beautiful like the 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 snake head variety that you get here the scientific name is chana punctata and there is another chanti which is called chana striata so these two varieties are the ones that are bad looking fish so you would not want to keep it in the aquarium why why did i get this fell from there because he's a beautiful looking people eat this like they're just sold in the market literally but i got it from there because it has the more beauty that it has for that cost that i spent on it and it has been living with us for about one and a half year there are no other tropical fish from south america and all they i don't find those that beautiful you know these fish is really they have a character they eat only he eats frogs i have to catch frogs and get like live frogs they're very very aggressive next question uh from my end i'd like to ask you a question i mean not yes. directly on the do's and don'ts and i think but since you have been into this for the last two decades you just shared yes how has it impacted you i mean can you can you share with the audience the you know the benefits of okay. having this okay okay aquarium okay. in house yeah 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 so uh, this has a very big impact so for for example i asked my dad a computer when i was little i asked him i need a computer i need to play games on a time computer i need this i need that so to divert my mind he got me a fish tank 
I mean, I already had small, small fish tanks, but I always wanted a big, big fish tank. So he got me a fish big tank, a big fish tank. So now what happened was, now I still can't sit on the computer for a long time. That has become a problem. I every weekend I get, I go fishing. I go going, I go off to catch fish. So what is happening here is, I am connecting to nature in a better level, in a closer manner. You know what I'm saying? So now my friends are there. I got a few friends. I think I have one friend of mine who's online. Let me see. Yeah, still here. Yeah, still he's here. online. Yeah, he's Sundar. He has he has been a friend of mine for about 20, 22 years now. He was never into fish, but he has a beautiful fish tank at home right now, and he has a pond also at home. So it's so my friends. What I think is a little hobby that we have. to connect with nature is to be shared now yeah. most of my friends i have two three other friends all of them have some kind of a aquarium at home because all we have right now is phones without a phone i can't function anymore without a laptop i can't function anymore so all i do is i leave this aside i just look forward to going into the woods going to water checking all the we have documented a lot of native species of fish I actually have a lot of native species of fish that are very, very beautiful looking in my tanks right now. So this builds, like it, it becomes more. You become more outdoorsy. You don't want to sit at home. You like to do things. You don't waste your time on things like I don't know things like these new video games that have come out, PUBG and stuff like that. You know, I've never used that. So I think it's a great understanding that you gain out of it. So from from fish, from fish since my childhood, I got interest in turtles. from turtles i got interested in snakes now i've been rescuing snakes for over 15 years now i've rescued many snakes i've we've i've worked with snakes and i like the part of education where you tell someone that having a big house and having a big car is not a big thing having an interest in these things gives you a better life is what i think i completely yeah. second you on that ashan I completely yeah. second you, and I'm sure I'm going to have another session for the younger lot, you know, for school kids please, and all. Please, because please, I think please. they definitely yes. need to get this connect, you know, because you're talking of three ecosystems, three different environments here, and this is yes. something which, uh, yeah, yes. it's a good tool to replace the computer and phone. <laughs> Amazing, yes. very, very good learning, mm-hmm. very good learning. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, uh, if we don't have any more questions, ladies and gentlemen, I think. Uh, we can thank Asha then say goodbye. I just am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, you thank are. Thank you, Jack. Very much. Wonderful session. I have just one question. I have one yeah. question. We are now connected with nature. Pertaining to thank light you. management, this is pertaining to light management that uh, Uncle had spoken about. Just wanted to understand, like, what is the life cycle like in terms of light? How many how many hours do we run the light? Is there a specific based on the size of the aquarium? Things like that. That dad will answer that. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yeah, it's your. It is a candle. I just got it. Yeah, but there are five five thousand candles of light for at least two by four aquarium for at least four hours. Most of the plants need four hours of photosynthesis to enrich their carbohydrates and other nutrients in themselves. So it requires four hours. Now see, there are terrariums. There are orchidariums. There are, uh, you know, uh, there are so many things. Really? These are known as a controlled environments where you can you can create your own world in front. For example, if you want to grow orchids or even other common plants, what we grow, you require at least six hours of uh, light uh, in the aquarium or a terrarium. But normally for aquatic plants, every day four hours. Of five thousand to six thousand candles, that is equal to four to six tube lights of forty watts each. LED is also you can have forty uh, watts. So what you should do is you put a all of them, you know, make a crate form. Normally our plants do not grow because of less light. Even my aquariums, I am not very satisfied with their light. Another good idea. The problem with the LED is LED is UV bandwidth is different. but most of the plants want little yellow and red light you know red light plant photosynthesis is 10 times greater than white light because infrared they want 
So better idea is along with the tube lights, you put normal our old bulbs around 40 watts because 60 watts, 100 watts make the water warm because they produce more heat. So best idea is you put four or five tubes of uh, your LEDs and add 40 watts normal bulbs, not uh, white bulbs, plain bulbs, and so that that yellow light improves tremendous capability. Plants will be absolutely lush green. Okay. Yes, so thank you. That is about the lighting for hours. Yes, Sundar, tell me any other question. Yeah, that was mine. That was the question I had. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Great going. Change your lights. Okay, I think uh, we are done for the day. Anyway. Right. Thank you so much, Ashad, for your time and the wonderful nice. inputs you have so shared. So any more questions or am I just log out? Yeah, I don't see any more questions in the chat box. Is there no one else? Hello? So, Thank you, Ashad. You connected us with nature. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ashad. Thank you, I, I don't see any more questions. Uh, yeah. it's, it's past seven o'clock. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, doctor. And thank you, Ashad. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Have a nice Dasera. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys have a good time. Yeah, sure. Good night. Have thanks. a good night. Good.